Welcome to Boss the Movement's Train the Trainer. In this session, we're going to be dealing with worship and Deuteronomy 28. Now, worship is defined as extravagant respect. The Word of God says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now, the key word in that scripture is love. And when we're dealing with extravagant respect and giving God uh, that, that attention, uh, we're going to begin to find that this is the unifying principle that causes all things to work together for the good. Because we are called of God, and of course we do love God. But in order to really reflect that love, we have to begin to move into giving God attention in the area of worship. So when we worship the Lord, he, He's not just looking for respect. We're looking to give God extravagant respect. Now, what does that look like? Now, uh, you'll learn, and if you've been to Vertical Leap, you've seen a uh, coach teach and break down uh, what that looks like, and I just want to give you a reminder. But one of the, some of the, uh, the exercises of bringing this to life so that we begin to see and understand and what you're going to want to deliver to your students and give them an example so they can see, so they can really begin to understand what extravagant respect looks like. And it's important because when we're dealing with this unifying principle of worship, it is the principles that are being taught in Boston Movement that all fit together as a whole as our students are learning to become conscious and disciplined, learning how to recognize when God speaks and identify what he's saying, organizing the information so that they can file it away for future reference. But in order to be conscious, in order to be able to be disciplined in their consciousness, they're going to have to begin to see what God is saying, and we're going to move into De De Deuteronomy 28 because that's a part of how this, these two principles can tie together. But when we're dealing with worship and we define worship as extravagant respect, we want to give them an example. Now, if you remember, during Vertical Leap, one of the things that Coach did is he asked for a volunteer, and you're going to want to do the same thing. Have a student come on up and say, now, we're going to see what uh, extravagant respect looks like. Because when we're worshiping God, um, you could literally uh, not be in the now principle of when God would speak to us through a dream, vision, and idea. Now, of course, we're dealing with Joel 2.28, where the Word of God says that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men dream dreams, and young men see visions. And so when does God give us the dreams, visions, and ideas? How is it that he speaks to us? And you're going to find that in the midst of worship, as we're giving God extravagant respect, that he will download into our mind's eye, into our spirit, a dream, a vision, or an idea. So it's important that we understand that in order to, to receive the download of our purpose, as God would speak to our hearts, that we begin to know what it is to truly understand how to worship the Lord. And giving them extravagant respect is dealing with giving God our consciousness, our undivided consciousness so that he can begin to speak to us as well as when we worship him. Now, we ask for a student to come up and volunteer, and we're going to demonstrate what uh, extravagant respect, what respect looks like. And uh, if you remember, what we'll do is that we'll take a pen in our hand and we'll ask the student, now, what I'm going to do is I'm, you know, I, I want you to take this. And, uh, but, but when they take it, uh, you want to make sure that you kind of look away or do something that's not giving them the attention that they need that does not reflect true respect. Now, so I'm going to ask, take this. <sighs> and they take it. And I'm yawning. And they take it. Now, my question to them is, was that respect? And the answer should be no. Okay, now I'll try it again. So let me, let me give it back to you again. Now, take this. So that they're going to take it. But I'm going to be going, uh, maybe, maybe waving, looking the other way. Is that respect? And I'll say, no, that's not respect. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to give it to them again. Well, now here, take it. And I'll give it to them. And they'll take it. And I ask, was that respect? And they, of course, the students and the rest of the class will say, yes, that was respect. And I said, yes, but that's not what God is looking for. God is looking for extravagant respect. Then you'll want to get on your knees and get on your hands and then lift up the pen and bow your head and then give it to them and let them take that. Now, was that respect? And, of course, that was going beyond and that's what God wants. He wants us to go beyond respect and give them extravagant respect. And by using this exercise, the students before your class can begin to know and see and understand that it's not just saying a prayer. It's not just listening to music. But it's totally giving undivided attention to our Lord and Savior, giving him the extravagant respect so that as the Word of God says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good. This unifying principle that causes all things to work together for the good because we love God and we're called according to his purpose. Now, in that process, God wants to bless us. And so when we talk about Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 speaks about if we hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, that blessings will overtake us. And so while we're in the midst of worship and that Joel 2.28 principle of God speaking to us through dreams, visions, and ideas, we're conscious, we know what to look for, we are going to begin to now understand Deuteronomy 28 because that, that is the positioning that we're in when it comes to worship and where God will begin to bless us through the Joel 2.28 process of dreams, visions, and ideas. Now Deuteronomy 28 is saying, if you hearken diligently unto my voice, now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the students see and understand what diligence looks like. Because if we're diligently hearkening unto the voice of the Lord, he, the Word of God says that blessings will overtake us. Now, we don't have to chase blessings. We shouldn't have to look for them, run for them. But we should, wherever we go, blessings will come and overtake us. And so this is how we should be operating and how the Lord should be moving in our life. Now, the key to the principle is you must hear it, see it, and do it now. What are the key principles to the Deuteronomy 28? You must what? Hear it, see it, and do it now. And you want your students to repeat that. The key to the principle of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 3, and you want to read the scripture to them, as they speak about hearkening diligently, the key is hear it, see it, do it now. But what does diligence look like? And there are a couple of different demonstrations or exercises that we can use uh, in the class so that way you can drive that into their spirit. But if I were to be uh, ready to run a race and I have my competitors and I would just happen to be standing straight and my competitor who's running this race against me is in position and they are ready in position so that way when the gun goes off and we have to start that race, if I'm in a standing position between me and my competitor who is in position, who would win the race? And of course, it would be the one that's in position because they're in a position of diligence, hearkening ready to hear the gun go off so they can shoot out and, and start the race. And it's within seconds that, uh, that you can find yourself losing if you're not prepared. A matter of just seconds. Another example that you can use in your class, and this is kind of a fun type of, of example that you can use that we've done in our class too, is this, is that let's just uh, muse with me and let's just say, that um, there just happened to be a very hungry, grizzly bear that's going to enter into the door of the classroom. And there's only one exit. And let's say there isn't, but let's pretend there's an exit. But the door that that grizzly is going to come into is the door that, that uh, we've all entered into. And what we're going to ask the students to do is prepare themselves to run out of the class because the bear that comes into the class has just woken up out of hibernation, is 
starving, and he's going to eat the one that's left behind, the slowest person in the class. And what you're going to want to do then is count to three. And you're going to ask the students to participate and have this kind of demonstration and, 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 kind, of, and kind of just muse with you and have fun with it. And so you're going to say uh, on the count of one. Now you're going to ask the students to get ready. Now you're going to notice, okay, what well, some of you don't look like you're prepared. Now remember, the bear is going to eat the last person in the class that's exiting that door. It's the slowest one that's going to lose. And so you'll go ahead and go, okay, now, you'll, now that you're prepping them, you say, one. So some of them should be getting kind of in a position to get out of their seats. Two. And as soon as you say two, some of them should almost be out of their seat. And then right when you're going to say three, you go, stop. And then you, free, you ask them to freeze. And you take a look at the one that's, that most looks prepared to get to that door first, the other door, to exit out. And you have the class look at that student. See their position? See how ready they are? That's what diligence looks like. So they can get a visual on that. And what God is asking is he's asking for us to hearken diligently to his voice. We must hear his voice unto perception see it on the inside, and do it now. So what we're asking them to do is understand that when you're in a position of worship, giving God extravagant respect, you are hearkening diligently. You're being conscious to recognize when God speaks through a dream, vision, or idea, a word perception. Hear it, see it on the inside so that you can do it now. Now, a word perception exercise that you may have done already in your orientation class that you're taught in Vertical Leap, for instance, is um, table. And I've shared this in one of the other teachings, table. I want you to close your eyes, and I'll ask them to close their eyes, and I'll give them a word, and I'll say, I'm going to say, give the word table, and I'm going to ask them now to see it. As they see it on the inside, they're going to learn the principle of that what just took place heard and they were able to see it on the inside and you're going to have that teaching in uh, one of the other diagram teachings so you can go through that but now they should know and understand what a word perception is and that is the dream vision or idea hear it see it on the inside and do it now 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 is defined as that zero to five seconds before that period of time that uh, you can hold on to a thought or an idea before it goes on to long-term memory. Now, that zero to five seconds. So while we're in worship, while we're hearkening diligently, hearing God's voice, that if we're conscious, God will speak to us in the now, zero to five seconds, and we'll see it on the inside before it goes back into long-term memory. Now, it's important that um, in this principle, in this now principle, Remember, it's one of the other examples that are given is that coach will use. He'll say, now, take this now. And you have a student volunteer, and they'll take the pen. And you'll say, no, you took it in the past. And they're going to be scratching their head. What do you mean took it in the past? You'll say, no, take it now. They'll take it faster. you say, no, you took it in the past. Take it now. And they'll take it faster. you say, okay, now, wait a minute. Where did you take it before you took it? And the key here is that they took it in their mind before they took it on the outside so they took it on the inside first in the now and they acted out in the past as they reached for it the principle go what we're dealing with here is that God will speak to us through a dream vision or idea in the now if and if we look at this principle the now is that zero to five seconds where we can hold on to a thought or an idea a vision before it goes on to into long-term memory but remember as it's stored into the long-term memory it becomes the hope for our future because if we're conscious and we hear what God is saying recognizing that it's him identifying what it is that he's giving us as a vision lining up with our purpose organizing that information filing it away for future reference we can then begin to work the plan the business plan, the six steps in birthing a vision or a business with no money, and you need to follow that teaching as well. 
But you're going to find that every one of these principles tie together as a whole so that we can begin to birth what God has called us to birth. So Deuteronomy 28, what is the key to the principle? You must what? Hear it, see it, do it now. Worship is defined as what? Extravagant respect. So as you're teaching and you're using the examples that I shared with you, your students are going to be get, get the visual of this, and uh, they'll be able to understand it. So that way, they, when they're in a position of worship, when they're learn, learning to hearken diligently, God will begin to speak to their hearts. Because you're going to ask your students questions like, what is your vision? What is it that you want to be when you grow up? And there's going to be some that are going to say, I don't know. And these principles are very important for them to begin to operate in so they can begin to learn and know what it is that God has called them to do, why he sent them here to this earth. And once they begin to get that revelation, they will have a reason to say no to what the enemy would attempt to trap them with as he would attempt to steal, kill, and destroy through gangs and drugs and all the other things that are out there in the world that are seducing our youth. Now our youth can begin to say no to what the enemy would offer them because they know what it is that God has a plan for their life. And they begin to now operate, move in it, and move in their birthright so they can begin to be empowered and fulfill what God has called them to fulfill. Amen? God bless you. I know these principles are powerful. As you teach them as trainers, they'll be driven into your spirit, and you'll find that you yourselves are going to be more uh, grounded in your foundation and your own purpose. Amen? God bless you, and have a great time in your class.